G'day everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to The Fire Show. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about magnesium. Now, why are we talking about magnesium? I don't hear you ask because I'm actually standing in my garage and talking to a camera all by myself. Well, the reason why we're talking about magnesium is in a previous episode, I had to add an asterisk to one of the scenes where I was explaining that water doesn't break down and therefore it's actually really good to apply to fires. Now, this is the case for most fires. In fact, just about every fire we put water onto, water stays as H2O, it puts the fire out and then everything gets better. But in the case of magnesium, when we actually put the water on the fire, the fire actually breaks the water down into its base elements being hydrogen and oxygen. And then it uses the oxygen from the water to actually further oxidize the fuel and then allow the magnesium to continue burning. Now this is a really interesting problem because in many new cars, they actually contain magnesium components, which means that if we go to a vehicle fire, we can actually find that we're going to encounter magnesium. And as you can see here, when the firefighter applies water to magnesium, it actually really flares up. Now the question is, is what's actually going on here? And to answer that, we're gonna do a little bit of an experiment where we're going to actually put some burning magnesium into water. Now you can see here I've got the magnesium burning and that's burning at a temperature of around about 3000 degrees Celsius, so it is very, very hot. And as I apply it to the water, what we can see is it doesn't just burn, it actually flares up. So what's happening is our water is being broken down into oxygen and hydrogen and magnesium is using the oxygen from the water to further oxidize itself and it's actually creating hydrogen which could then burn in itself. So this raises the question, how can we actually put magnesium out? And we might just think, well, why don't we just hit it with carbon dioxide, which is a common fire extinguisher. And we actually encountered the same problem. So what I'm gonna do is demonstrate this in another experiment. Now, you can see here that I'm adding my carbon dioxide to the beaker. And just to demonstrate that, what I'm gonna do is actually light a little bit of rag with some petrol on it and just dunk that into the carbon dioxide. And you'll quickly see that it quickly puts the fire out. However, when we do that with magnesium, what we actually see is the fire flares up. And this is because the magnesium is burning so hot that it's stealing the oxygen from the carbon dioxide. And therefore it's using that oxygen to further oxidize itself. Now, we're really starting to run out of options here. How are we gonna put this magnesium out? Now our third option is to cover it with sand or silicon dioxide. Now I'm sure you can probably see where this one's going. If I only add a small amount of sand to our burning magnesium, we actually end up with the same problem. We can actually see that the magnesium is gonna break our silicon dioxide down and it's gonna steal the oxygen from that molecule and the magnesium can continue to burn. However, if we add enough of the sand, then we ended up with an oxidized layer on the outside of our magnesium and the magnesium will go out. Now, I'm not suggesting we should actually turn up to a car fire and start throwing sand at it to try and put it out. That's obviously not a practical solution. And to be quite honest, if we just spray water at the magnesium, that's going to flare up and fully oxidize and go away. But it is important to note, and our quick Google search later actually showed that there have been firefighters injured from these magnesium flare-ups. So it's really important that when we're operating around vehicle fires, we keep our distance and make sure the fire is extinguished before we move into an area that can be considered dangerous. All right, well, that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.